Hello, 103. Look what we're doing. Got it? I love the expiratory system. I think it's so cool. So whatever, whatever anybody else says, don't listen to them. We're going to talk about the urinary system. So what do you need? Your lecture notes and you want your slides. We'll go up to the top. And let's let's do this. So the excretory system, the excretory system. Um, this picture of lungs is not the excretory system. I will put a different. We need a different slide. Let me see. That's the one we need. Okay. Well, you can imagine the excretory system is there, like a picture of bladder. I don't know. There should be that there. Um, okay. So. If you're not super excited about the excretory system like I am apparently, you can watch this crash course video and maybe get a little more excited. But the crazy part about the excretory system, and I filled in some of your um, some of your your notes because they it's actually pretty amazing. So the excretory system is different than the digestive system because the digestive system breaks down your was food, breaks down your was nutrients and helps you absorb them and then just gets rid of the waste, right? Well, the, the urinary or excretory system deals with ions. So if you've ever um, gone to the doctor and they're like, your electrolytes are off, or they said, somebody's electrolytes, or, or you're drinking like Gatorade and it's like, ooh, good for your electrolytes. Electrolytes are just ions. So your excretory system really deals with all of the ion balances in your body, which are super important because every time you think, you're just moving ions around. So. If you ever thought ions weren't important, trust me, they're important. So electrolytes are just ions and the functions of the excretory system, among other things, like a lot of times it's cleaning your blood, cleaning your fluids, but you can just say cleaning your fluids because depending on what kind of animal it is, they might not have blood. Anyway, um, everybody's getting rid of nitrogen. Everybody is getting rid of nitrogen. So you've got to get rid of nitrogen. Nitrogen's in everything you eat. Nucleic acids are full of nitrogen. Protein is full. Actually, protein is full of a lot of nitrogen. Anyway, you have to get rid of nitrogen all day long. All day long, you're trying to get rid of nitrogen. You have too much of it. It's not good for you to be in for it to be in your body all the time. So you got to get rid of it. So that's one thing. You also are going to do ion. Remember, it's just electrolytes and water balance. Okay. Um, water balance. Wait. Yes, we are land terrestrial mammals, me and you. So we have to deal with water because we, if we lose too much of it, we will die. So water balance, another big deal, okay? Um, I think we got the digest. <laughs> Do all animals have them? It's the same answer. Are we, we're coming up with a, with a theme. It's the same answer, right? So if you are moving and complicated and you're creating a lot of nitrogen because you're eating a lot of food because you have a high metabolism, you will have an excretory system, okay? To get rid of the waste. A lot of toxins in, excretory system can get rid of toxins too. Yeah. Like if you drink a lot of alcohol, you will urinate a lot of that alcohol out. <laughs> Believe it or not. Okay, so what components are involved? Well, we'll kind of go over that. It depends on what organism you are. You probably know a few of the components, so you could write that down right now. What components are involved in your body, in your urinary, urinary system? Yeah. And then metabolic rate, we, we already said. The more endothermic, the more active you are, the more you're going to need a decent or complicated excretory system. Okay, those who don't need much, sponges and jellyfish, again, they don't, they don't need all that. They don't need all that stuff. Remember, they're ecto, and they can just get rid of, they all, everybody has to get rid of nitrogen, but they can just get rid of it in the water. They just have specialized cells that, like, get rid of it. Oh, life is good for them. Okay, so let's talk about what this word means, homeostasis, what is it? And I wrote something down here just about, there's an internal balance inside of you. So if I was just to say, hey, glucose in your blood, you have, you and me and everybody has a really narrow window of blood glucose that's okay. If we have too much, bad things will start to happen to us. If we have too little, other bad things will happen. 
Homeostasis is keeping your body in the right blood glucose, in the right blood calcium, in the right body internal body temperature, in the right external body temperature. When I leave homeostasis, when your body leaves homeostasis, it will do something to get back into homeostasis or you will get sick or you will die. Yes, kind of sad, but homeostasis is really important. So our body is constantly trying to stay in homeostasis. Yeah. Okay. So knowing that the urinary system is like a key player in homeostasis because it's regulating all of your ion balance. Yeah. Um, it's good to know that. It's also trying to get rid of waste. Now, why would you want to have a tube system? So the excretory system in most, in all vertebrates is like a tube system. There's tubes. Now, why do we want tubes? What's so great about tubes? Well, why would you want to put, why would you want to have a tube system instead of just have it like all over your body? What are, what are so great about tubes? Okay, let you think about that there. Okay, so these are the different, we're gonna talk about it in lab too, but these are the different systems. We have um, the different tubular systems. They're all tubes for excretory system. It's been happening for a long time, Every, almost everybody. And you can see here, there's a whole lot of invertebrates that also have tube systems. So this must be really important. So platyhelminthes, platys are flatties, right? They're flat, so flatworms, they have kind of this proto, like pre little tube system. I don't even know if we have a picture of it, but they just, it's like a tube system. And it's just like little tiny tubes that go out to the outside of the body and it just dumps waste. Not kidding. Um, annelids, so those are worms and mollusks like snails and clams and squid. They have true tubes that run through their body. So they have these true tubes, but there's a lot of them, like a lot. And they actually have a little, um, it hooks up to their anus and they can get rid of it. Um, arthropods, those are like insects and spiders. They have something really cool called Mount Piggy and Tubules. I know I have a picture of that and we'll look at that in lab. But again, tubes, we're all doing this. Amphibians, reptiles, and mammals have kidneys. Mm -hmm. Yep. So how do I deal with waste? We all are doing it in some way. There's a video, there's several videos where we could talk about platy. They're not very interesting videos. I mean, they're factual, but maybe not like riveting. Um, so you just watch the 40, first 45 seconds. You can look at mammal excretory system at that last one. Um, and those will, those will contrast each of those. And I also have a couple slides too. Um, and we'll do that in lab too. So we didn't get to look at the malpigian tubules in insects, which is so great, but we will in lab. And one of those videos does it. So you'll get to see like, they look like little tiny tubes that go all around inside the gut of the, all around the gut of the insect. Really cool. Um, all right. Now, looking at tubes doesn't tell the whole story. Looking at tubes doesn't tell the whole story. Let's see where we are here. Some examples, um, malpivian tubules. The four parts of the mammalian urinary system are kidneys, ureters, bladder, and urethra. So hopefully I have a, a slide of that. But if not, I can go back up here. There we go. So just in case I don't have an awesome slide of this. So kidneys, that's the first. Ureters are these tubes that travel down, so they carry, they carry the urine, that's all the waste, all the nitrogen, get rid of all that nitrogen. The bladder and the urethra is right here at the opening, and that's where the urine exits, okay? That's the mammalian urinary system. Okay, just wanna make sure we have that. Okay, we're gonna first, before we look at water balance, we're gonna look at nitrogen. And nitrogen actually, when we look at nitrogen and getting rid of nitrogen, we're actually looking at water too. So you'll see in a second. Why is it such a big deal? It's in everything and it will hurt you. It becomes toxic if you get too much of it. So you gotta get rid of it. Does everybody need to get rid of it? Everybody. 
Everybody needs to get rid of it. All animals need to get rid of it. Okay. I'm on the second page here. All animals, three ways we can get rid of it. Okay, so there's three, there's more than three ways, but generally these are the three ways. Um, these are the main three ways that we get rid of it. So if you're an organism, you will use one of these three ways. We've got, you can use ammonia. Whoa, why am I not drying? You can use ammonia. You can get rid of your nitrogen. This is, there are, these are all three ways to get rid of nitrogen. Ammonia, you can use urea and uric acid. Because these are three different like molecules, okay, solutions that you can make. Um, ammonia is really cheap in terms of like how much energy it takes to make it, like how much energy it re your, your liver or whatever organ you need requires to make it. It's super cheap. But you need to have a lot of water to dilute it because ammonia, it, it's super, super toxic. So the only way you can do it is if you have a lot of water at your disposal, okay? Urea is cost it costs more to make urea. It costs more for your liver or whatever organ that you have. It costs more to make it. It's more expensive. It's going to cost you. It's going to be part of your metabolism, part of the energy, part of the calories that you burn. Okay. However, you need a lot less water. Okay, so you don't need as much water, so you can probably live on land. Cool. All right. Uric acid is like pasty. It's almost white and pasty. And it's very expensive for your liver or whatever organs you're using that you have to make it. Very expensive. Very costly. However, you don't need much water. Hardly any water at all. So if you live in a very dry environment, cool. Very cool. Okay, so that's so cool. So here are some examples of how, who's going to use what. So if you live in water, if you just live in water and, and it doesn't matter, you have so much water around you and you just live it and live in it, you can just make ammonia. It's cheap to make. You don't have to do much and you just let it go. And so you're just going to be urinating kind of all day because you just let it go into the water. doesn't even matter. You don't have to save water, right? However, if you live on land, if you live on land, you're gonna to have to start thinking about saving water. So if you live on land, ammonia is way too toxic. You have to get rid of it right away. So if you live on land, you're gonna um, probably use urea and mammals use urea, yeah. Um, there are, but there are some organisms that actually really have to conserve water or they have to be lightweight. So they have to get rid of whatever's in their body. So insects and reptiles, including birds, insects, reptiles, including birds, use uric acid. It's almost like a paste. Okay. And they're, it's really expensive, but they don't waste any water. And I just thought I'd had to include this because there's a whole bunch of uric acid on this person's. <laughs> and we've all had this happen, right? Maybe not to this extent. but it's not the same as poop. It's not the same as urine, right? This is uric acid. It's acid, it's pasty, it doesn't have much water in it. Okay, so when we're in class, we're gonna play, we're gonna play the excretory social and you're gonna write down your favorite animal. We're gonna, um, we're in the link, we're gonna write our favorite animal and then we're gonna say like, which waste do you think they use? Do they use um, ammonia, urea, or uric acid. And then we'll go into groups or we'll figure out a way to communicate with each other. Like, why do we think so? And you'll get used to who uses what. It's pretty fun. Yay. Okay. So we did with, with the nitrogenous waste, with getting rid of nitrogen, we did talk about water. We said reptiles use uric acid because they conserve water, right? We, they don't have to use much water to, to get rid of uric acid. Okay. Another thing um, about water balance is called osmoregulation and everybody does it, but it's really easy to see with fish, okay? So fish, fish face osmoregularity problems because they live in water. And so let me show you what I mean by that. So here's, this is a freshwater fish. So a freshwater fish, the freshwater is always trying to get inside the fish, right? And so the freshwater fish is always like, 
oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. There's water trying to seep inside my body all the time. And it kind of does get in the body. So what they do is they just go to the bathroom all the time. They just make a lot, a lot of dilute urine. So they're just, they let the water come in, but they just pee it out all the time. They just urinate it out all the time. No problem. Okay. Um, so they also do some stuff with their gills where they try to take in more ions, which sometimes works. It's good. But a lot of it is just, you just urinate a lot. If you live in fresh water, yeah. And this goes, you know, even, even mammals that use urea, like um, platypus or, um, that's all I can think about right now, or platypus, sea cows, the manatees, they're so cute. They can just go to the bathroom all the time. They don't have the water problems that terrestrial, that living on land, they do, okay? So anyway, that's what they're gonna do if they live in fresh water. If you live in salt water, you've got a bigger problem. So salt water, it's very salty on the outside of you and all that salt's trying to get in you, okay? Your osmosis, all that salt is trying to get into, into you. And so what you're gonna do is produce very little urine and actually you're going to send a bunch of salt salts out a bunch of ions out a bunch of salty stuff out with the urine so it's going to be really 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 concentrated and that's what they do i mean this is osmoregulation yeah if it doesn't make sense no problem we're going to talk about it in lab again too but just so you know osmoregulation i think we're are we done yet it says one more thing um why are digestive systems different and we've talked about it a little bit, but we'll talk about it next week. We're going to talk about digestive systems. So we'll even bring it up again. I'm so excited that you went on this journey with me into the urinary system. Excretory. Wasn't too bad, was it? Can't you wait for that social? See you in class. It'll be fun.